I now begin the introduction to Habakkuk, a book with the motto of The Just Shall Live by Faith. Introduction, the author is Habakkuk. He's unknown except as the author of this particular book. His name appears to be non-Hebraic. There is a Akkadian cognate that suggests that it may refer to some kind of bush. It was uh, the uh, uh, Habakkuku was uh, <clears throat> listed among garden plants. And so it, it may be that he's named after some sort of plant or bush. Exactly what species is uh, not clear. Uh, older etymologies related it to the Hebrew root to embrace, but it has too many consonants in it to uh, fit that interpretation well. The date of the book is probably between 609 to 605 BC, although it could bleed a little a few years later, even down to 600, I think. That would make him a contemporary of the prophet Jeremiah. He predicts the coming of the Chaldeans or the Babylonians. And the most likely fulfillment of that would be 605 BC when the Babylonians first take control of Judah after the Battle of Carchemish. Alternatively, there's another besiegement in 598-597 and so it could refer to that coming of the Babylonians, or even to the coming before the destruction of Jerusalem in 586. But I take it to be the initial one, uh, 605 B.C. In chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 4, it speaks of injustice in the land, so verse 4, it's a time when there's a strife and contention, the law is paralyzed, justice never goes forth, the wicked surround the righteous so that justice goes forth perverted. What well, seems unlikely that that would be during the time of good King Josiah, who was killed in 609. And so the description here seems to be after 609, after good King Josiah is gone, but before the arrival of the Babylonians, who first arrived at 605, and hence uh, my, my overall date for the book, uh, uh, 609 to 605. Though it could be anticipating uh, the second uh, invasion, which would then place us uh, a little later. theme of the book has to do with the question of theodicy. Theodicy has to do with justifying the ways of God to man. And one of the issues that's coming up in this book is how can God use those wicked Babylonians? Uh, verse 13, your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent? while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves. And I take this to be a reference to the Babylonians. God is using them for his purposes, and yet Judah is not as wicked as they. So how can you use the more wicked Babylonians as the instrument of your uh, punishment of the less wicked uh, Judeans? And Habakkuk's... Uh, answer is going to be that the just shall live by faith. Again, see, he is puffed up, his desires are not upright, but the righteous shall live by his faith. That's key verse, chapter 2 and verse 4. So, the way that it starts off is a dialogue between the prophet and God. And the prophet begins by asking a question, a question that implies a complaint. Why does God tolerate injustice in Judah? 
Verse 3, why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Their strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked him and the righteous so that justice is perverted. Why do you do that, God? And what are you going to do about it? And so God then responds and gives an answer. I'll do something about it. I'm going to send the Babylonians who will come to punish Judah for this wickedness. Verse 6, I'm raising up the Babylonians, uh, literally the Chaldeans, uh, the, comes to be a synonym for Babylonians, although technically the Chaldeans were, at least initially, the ruling class among the Babylonians. But uh, I'm raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwelling places not their own. Well, that raises a second question in the mind of Habakkuk. Well, how can God use the more wicked Babylonians to punish the less wicked Judeans? Why do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? And then having raised that provocative question, questioning the justice of God, he then climbs up on a watchtower to see what's going to happen, perhaps if lightning's going to strike him for daring to raise this question to God. And then God gives a second answer where he affirms that the Babylonians are just as wicked as Habakkuk suggests that they are, but that nonetheless that God can use them for his purposes and, and Habakkuk's role is to simply trust God and his goodness. In uh, two four, it says, See, he, meaning the Babylonian, is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous shall live by his faith. Now, in the rest of the pa uh, chapter, uh, God goes on to affirm that Babylon is to be punished also even if God has used them as the instrument of his judgment on Judah. Chapter 2 and verse 6. Shall not all these take up their taunt against him, the Babylonian, with scoffing and riddles for him, and say, Woe to him who heaps up what is not his own, for how long? And loads himself with pledges. Will not your debtors suddenly arise, and those awake, who will make you tremble, then you will be spoil for them. Because you have plundered many nations, all the remnant of the peoples shall plunder you for the blood of man and the violence to the earth, to cities, and all who dwell in them. In other words, God is not unawares that uh, the Babylonians have done what they done they, they did for their own wicked, uh, selfish purposes. And yet, nonetheless, he's using them for his own purposes. In chapter 3, there's a little poem of Habakkuk where Habakkuk uh, reflects on this and expresses the faith that he's called upon to have in chapter 2 and verse 4. There he describes how the Babylonians are going to come. He says in 316, I heard, uh, and my inward parts trembled at the sound, my lips trembled, decay entered my bones, and in my place I trembled because I must wait quietly for the day of distress, for the people to arise who will invade us. I think, by the way, the New American Standard has that verse right. NIV talks about the invading of Babylon. But I, I think he's back to uh, uh, the Babylonians about to invade Judah, as God has uh, foretold to him. <clears throat> but then he expresses his faith. 
though the fig tree should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive, olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, yet I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength, and he has made my feet like a hind's feet, that's a kind of deer, and he makes me walk on my high places. And then it uh, has the musical instruction uh, for the choir director on stringed instruments. The theology of the book of Habakkuk, the key theme is that verse uh, 4 of chapter 2, the righteous will live by faith. And this is the key theme for the Christian life. Christian life is one of faith. The New Testament quotes Habakkuk three different times. Romans 1.17 For the gospel is a righteousness from God that is revealed a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. And in context, in Romans 1, Paul is emphasizing that salvation itself is based on faith, not on uh, good works. Galatians 3.11, uh, he picks the same verse. Uh, Clearly no one is justified before God by the law, because the righteous will live by faith. Again, the emphasis is salvation for the Christian is by faith and not by meriting it with good works. And then Hebrews uh, 10.38 also quotes from Habakkuk, But my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. And here the emphasis is living by faith. So not only uh, is faith the beginning of the Christian walk, uh, but uh, after you become a Christian, you have to live uh, by faith as we await the second coming in the context of Hebrews 10, and those shrinking back uh, are lost. So that's the theme of the book of Habakkuk, and that's my introduction to that book.